what you're about to see is an all-new special of unplanned bloopers. This material contains giggles, goofs, and <laughs> guffaws. It's all new, isn't it? Roll it, guys. Don't roll me, roll up. We did it. We did it. Of course we did it because we learned how not to get out. We learned You'll find out in a minute. <laughs> Now so look, this is Pinky. Pinky, the most pampered porker in Britain. He lives in absolute luxury, as you can see. But there's one very important thing missing from his life. Find out what that is. Get off! Join us at the Lives of Satan. Go! Go! Invite it! All right, now listen. I want you to lower me directly over the microchip where this... Be right back. we have orchestrated an all-new symphony of blown lines and giggles and slips and trips and falls for your listening and your viewing pleasure. We have uh, some rather interesting goofs from every walk of motion picture and television life, bloopers from current events, news, comedy, drama, and while we're on the subject of comedy and drama, wherever you go, people are talking about politics, campaigning, speeches, polls, debates, and promises. You know, politicians are very sure of themselves. They are confident. They are ready to get their message across. And there are two major promises he has not been able to keep, and those are the promises to put more Americans back to work, and the second promise is the promise to, um... What is that second promise? <laughs> Deficits, budget, balance and budget, that's right. It may come as a shock to you people who live out in the real world of what really happens, but, uh... But occasionally do something, and, you know, not too often. I think the House has passed National Peach Month uh, this year, <laughs> and we're going to act on it soon. We're almost uh, out of time for uh, this uh, program. Of course, we'll be back with you later, indeed, uh, throughout the day. Uh, we haven't a result for you yet. Uh, we thought we might have, but nevertheless, let's look at the state of the parties at the moment. <laughs> and there it is. I think I should read that. The official unionist nil, DUP nil, the SDLP nil, Alliance nil, Sinn Féin nil, others nil. Well, that would certainly uh, confound all the predictions in any election. <laughs> The chair has been asked to announce that a, through an, 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 a, an attempt, oh God, make my mouth work. The county commission ordered a study to determine what restrictions should be placed on the center before it would be allowed to expand. The commission put off making any decision until next Tuesday. John McPherson, New Center 2. Where should I say I am? <laughs> For the rest of tonight, partly cloudy and mild temperatures. Well, same to you, mister. 69 degrees. In spite of the threats of violence, the Pan American Games opened without an incident today in San Juan, Puerto Rico. A packed house was on hand to watch as the athletes of 33 nations paraded into the stadium. Wait a minute. Those aren't the athletes. Hold it, hold it. That was Miss Colorado. She was not at the Pan Am Games. How do you know? I was there. <laughs> well, as you can see, it's time now for news, weather, and sports. And to join our news team, we have a lady of exceptional talent. She is an actress and anchor woman. She was the host of NFL Today and the first female host of television's greatest sports legend. She won an Emmy for her hosting of the Rose Parade. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jane Kennedy. Please sit. Oh. You know, 
You're a very remarkable lady. Every time I look at you, now you're so pretty to look at, but you sing and you dance and you act and you narrate, you do everything, but years and years ago, you were a regular on the Dean Martin show? That's right, yeah. I started off on Dean Martin as a dingling sister. You, you said it, I didn't. You uh, were a dingling, yeah. <laughs> uh, I never liked that name either, but that's what I was. You did a magazine show once, and I never know what people are going to say when they come out here. Something mm -hmm. about vegetable soup. What does that mean? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I host a lot of different types of shows, and we did a news magazine type of format show. And there was a segment on it about cooking. So I was telling everybody about how I make my homemade vegetable soup. And my mom happened to be visiting Los Angeles at the time, and I went through the whole deal about how you put this in and that. And they had pre-made a sample recipe that they would have sitting on the side so that when you finish your description you could pull it out and say and this is what it's supposed to look like mm -hmm. so at the end of it i say trying to be smart but the real way to test to make sure you got good soup is to have your mother taste it right and if mom likes it it's good and i grabbed my mom and i pulled her up on stage and i said mom taste this she didn't know you were going to do this no she didn't and, and so i put the spoon in her mouth she takes this real little taste you know and she says it's good. I said, no, you got to do it this way. And I take a big spoonful and I go, mmm, it's good. You know, exaggerating in the whole bit. She says, no, it's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> you should have quit while you're ahead. I bet that made news. Uh, yes, it did. As a matter of fact, it also made me realize that doing the news is not as easy as it looks. Mm. As a matter of fact, news people are not always perfect. I think we have proof positive. Take a look over here. Okay. City inspectors ordered that the building be torn down. They say it has deteriorated <laughs> too much since it became vacant two years ago. So a freeze wasn't a problem this time, but in the coming year, some experts say that growing <laughs> things on here. <laughs> so a freeze wasn't a problem this time, but in the coming year, some experts say that grow. <laughs> Tell me what happened, very briefly. Uh, this uh, came off my motorcycle on my radio. Fell off my, my radio. It's a knob, it's a radio knob. That was just as you were approaching the nuts and bolts in the street that they're cleaning up now. How do you feel about that? Is that an old one? It's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> now, what this food commentator doesn't realize is that what he is about to taste is a very spicy Chinese food. Uh, Jane, here comes the first taste of that spicy Chinese food. I think this is what you call a slow bird. Copy of Ken's recipe. Just send a stamp self-addressed envelope. Now watch. <laughs> the site, once it's cleared, could become the area for retail development. And he said, it's not too far-fetched. This is Cy Becker, Springfield Television News. Okay. Now, the reporter's got the story right, but uh, keep your eye on that truck there, the, this one coming by now. This is a very long truck, right? Now, hold it, hold it, watch out, whoa, whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Let's get the camera around there and see what it did. This is our mobile news unit. Station wagon formerly there, however, now. <laughs> I'll walk back, okay? Put this on the news. Get this out Here we are. Good morning from Action News 19. Here's some headline news this morning. The city of Jerusalem is decked with Egyptian flags. Jupiter, 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 Jupiter. <laughs> I have a feeling you thought it was a rehearsal. <laughs> have you uh, ever done weather in your life? Only once. I predicted that it would not rain at a football game, mm -hmm. and it's in the Silver Dome, so who would ever think that it's going to rain indoors? I said on the air, well, at least we don't have to worry about the weather conditions today. But in the Silver Dome, they have that high metallic ceiling. The roof is all metal, and it was very cold, and it was snowing, so there's snow that we had packed up on top of the roof. And then you get the heat and the energy of everybody that's in the stadium, and it starts to rise. So you have the cold front and the hot front meeting, and it started raining, actually raining inside, inside the stadium, <laughs> inside the summer dome. That's a first. A first. Not only is the weather unpredictable, but sometimes the weather uh, prediction is a little unpredictable. Notice. 
temperatures are going to be kind of in the high 80s and maybe the low 90s. So really a big contrast. Hello, Blue Wall. <laughs> we're going to have the, uh, well, where'd he go? This is what you call TV magic, folks. We're having a little problem with our uh, board back there today. I tell you what, I'm going to step out of the way and let's just go ahead and put up the weather forecast and uh, or whatever comes up. We'll just read it off. Okay, well, we're not going to have that. They want me to move back in here. We're going to let down the map, right? This is fun. And now John Hoffman is here with our Good weather. John, it was a beautiful day to be at the zoo or any place else you just happened to be. Tell us what tomorrow is going to be like. Well, uh, thank you. I really couldn't hear a word you were saying. I assume you were talking to me and introducing me. The other thing that will kind of be keeping us cloudy is Tropical Storm Dennis. We've been talking about Dennis for quite a while. <laughs> Uh, I, I love the news and the weather and the sports because there's a premise that everything ought to run smoothly in your reporting and so forth. Now, you've been the host of the long-running Greatest Sports Legends show, and everybody knows you for your fine work on NFL today, but somebody told me once, was it your first time on the air when you had trouble? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, welcome to live television. You see it with the weathermen and all of that. But the very first time I ever did a live show, and it was on the NFL Today, and I wanted so badly to make a good impression and do a good job, and I had really prepared right for it. I went to my hometown, Cleveland, to get a story on Sam Ritigliano, who was coaching uh, his first year, coaching mm -hmm. the Cleveland Browns. So I said, well, at least I'm on familiar ground. I know I'm going to do a great job and everything. And we get in the studio, and Brent does this fantastic lead in, this new girl on the show, and she's got this interview. And what have you got for us today, Jane? And I said, well, we've got Sam Ritigliano for the Cleveland Browns, and I'm so proud that I did it perfectly. My nerves are going like this. And then they go to the film clip, and it's not there dead air and absolutely nothing and so we're going uh well what happened down there in the tape room and they came back and they said the tape machine literally just chewed up the tape that was your first very time first on time on the air brent turns to me he says welcome to live television <laughs> now what did you do for the interview and i had to recount the entire thing and luckily i knew what i was talking you about remember, you remember <laughs> the, talking about live we have a few similar moments here of very very capable sportscasters who uh hopefully can look back on it and laugh now. <laughs> the National League flag goes up for grabs tomorrow afternoon in St. Louis, where the Cardinals will throw Joaquin Andujar at the Braves. Atlanta will counter with Phil Necro. You gotta go with the knucklehead, well, the knuckleballer, Phil Necro. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what I was gonna say that. Now, here's an interesting match between a reporter and a loudspeaker. Nestled between the Mediterranean Sea and a hillside in Monaco is one of Europe's most glamorous tennis clubs. The Monte Carlo Country Club attracts beautiful people and movie stars Wait, from Mr. all Van over Patton the world. <laughs> Nestled between the Mediterranean Sea and a hillside in Monaco is one of Europe's most beautiful Mr. tennis clubs. Nestled between the Mediterranean Sea and a hillside in Monaco is one of Europe's most glamorous tennis clubs. The Monte Carlo Country Club attracts movie stars and beautiful people from all over We're the world. Down the courts before we start. I knew I could make it. See, it's easy. <laughs> You know what I love about you? You do so many things and you do them all well. You are a sportscaster and a performer and a talker and a doer. And your latest venture featuring Jane Kennedy is the exercise video album of a thing called Love, love Your, your body. body. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <Tell Exer> me. <laughs> <laughs> but exercise is an area where you can maintain control because you're you're the master of your own body and when you are mentally and physically fit there's absolutely nothing that you can't do well you are obviously physically fit did you say mentally uh, yes <laughs> Cute. Should I show him some exercises? <laughs> oh, it looks like he's looking at me. <laughs> Thank you.
Song. I think it was from a Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers movie. Uh, the song was Pick Yourself Up, Dust Yourself Off, and Start All Over Again. Well, here's some slips, trips, and falls from performers who have no choice but to do just that. Pick themselves up, dust themselves off, and start all over again. activity for your weekend, but whatever you have planned, have a good one. And we'll I'm glad we have a weekend coming up because <laughs> I'm going to need it. Maybe we won't see you Monday. <laughs> have a nice weekend. After you. <laughs> part of the bridge that the parents are particularly concerned about, the part that leads down a steep slope of an old coal tip, down to the river and the railway bridge, all irresistible. <laughs> now, here's a little quiz for you. What do doors, cars, guillotines, pants, and flames all have in common? You give up? Well, they're props that can make an actor feel like he should have stayed in bed. Now, watch my friend Jeff Edwards. He's in a cooking demonstration. Now, when things go wrong, the true test of a good talk show host is he is unflappable. Well, Jeff Edwards is a master of the trade. If I'd been there, I would have been long gone, but he hangs in. This is a beauty. Watch. Well, after the drop... I have to uh, stuff him up. Yeah. Uh, just deep fry it, okay? And, oh my God. Okay, folks. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, <laughs> either what we're going to do, sure. yeah, let's move it over. Yeah. There, I'll get it. Dick Clark, we'll be on your show soon, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, now we have two fires. Now, when you do this at home, be sure that you're a professional. <laughs> Only professionals should do this at home. Okay. All right. I think the best thing to do is move over here. We have any baking soda? <laughs> do not ever blow a fire. Never blow a fire. Okay, and don't hit it like that. Best thing to do is to say, help! <laughs> there we are. Can you hold the blade up there so I can see what your pressure plan Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this razor out sharp blade metal blade right through your neck but it shouldn't hurt what? oh Barry! Oh, just a minute <laughs> <laughs> really? 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 Here's a very young Rick Nelson and his friend Wally. Here. Now this next piece of business with Wally's pants is unplanned. Oh. <laughs> You know, there are a lot of people that swear that a dog is man's best friend, and there are a lot of people who contend that a cat is man's best friend, and I'm sure that there are some who believe that a turtle or a parakeet or even a fish or a pig is man's best friend. The fact of the matter is that people love animals and animals love people. All you gotta do is convince the people and the animals in these next scenes. First of all, we have a reporter in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now, Albuquerque is not exactly the alligator capital of the world. The closest most people will come to seeing an alligator here in Albuquerque is at the Rio Grande Zoo. Behind the <laughs> Here in World Park, you see a lot of people jogging with their dogs. And what amazes me is that the dogs just don't seem to come by. <laughs> he is dying over here. <laughs> Sorry. 
Come on, let's have another one. Come on. No, come on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there any other points that need to be watched? No. Uh, the thing is, some, some some burners get a canker in their ear because their ears fall over, so they've got to be prepared for vet skills as yeah. well. At the moment, all these lovely lads, lad and lasses here are all in good health. Hey, hey! A good friend of ours, the talented Donna Dixon, was one of the stars of the zany comedy series Bosom Buddies. Now, somehow or other, she found out that some tape existed of scenes from the show that didn't quite go as planned. Now, luckily, we were able to hang on to these scenes, and we asked Donna to tell us just what happened. On Bosom Buddies, there were a lot of bloopers. In fact, I think the funniest outtakes, of course, were the bloopers, and I wish that you could show some of them, but unfortunately you can't because they would be rated X. In this particular scene, Kip takes moi to a cabin up in the mountains for a skiing trip. Now, he's really excited. He thinks, now, this is it. And I am very upset because I went to this skiing lodge on false pretenses, and I'm supposed to say Mount Wussy. But it came out a little different. <laughs> I spend 400 bucks on the weekends in the mountains. And now what remember, what she's do? about to say rhymes with Mount Wussy. It's not my fault that they named me Mount Wussy. <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind when I hear Tom Hanks is brilliant. I think I should be his manager. I, I think I'm probably his biggest fan. But Tom is wonderful. He and Peter, the two of them together, reminded me of Laurel and ha Hardy. Abbott and Costello. The timing between the two boys were, was magical. You should tell her how you feel. Take it from there. <laughs> hey, you know, that is not a bad idea. You just might have something there, Poncho. I could come completely straight with her. Tell her how I have disguised myself as, as, as... <laughs> I opened the beer and forgot a line. What am I going to say? <laughs> Kip, it's no good. We've got to tell them the truth. <laughs> Wendy Jo Sperber. Anytime Wendy would make a slight mistake, if she went blank or whatever, she would always start laughing. In this scene, Kip and Wendy are trying, and I do mean trying, to get into Henry's bedroom door. Unfortunately, on the set of Bosom Buddies, we always had problems with doorknobs. Would you hurry up? Henry's gonna be here any minute! Will you shut up, Amy? These locks are very delicate mechanisms. One eighth of an inch play on my suck. What in the world am I saying? <laughs> Will you shut up these... Oh <laughs> Would you hurry up? Henry's gonna be here any minute! Amy, will you just shut up? These locks are very delicate mechanisms. <laughs> On the show, the boys were constantly complaining, and rightfully so. They realized that it was really difficult being a woman. And I don't think they ever got used to it. In fact, we always had to stop the show on several accounts because Kip would trip over his heel or his bra would be crooked so his breasts would be lopsided or just getting stuck in the elevator. I mean, they didn't get too much rehearsal with heels and unfortunately, they didn't rehearse at home. God! Oh, God! Oh, no! She saw a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> what the matter? I had my heel stuck in my dress, okay?
Next time that anybody calls me that, they're not going to get to be an elderly anything. Now, I can understand you're getting upset, dear. Yes. I fixed very funny, and I had to tell you this because I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do you remember when you were a kid and your teacher used to make you tie a string around your finger so that you wouldn't forget something important? Well, here's some well-known actors who uh, maybe should have tied strings around their fingers so they wouldn't forget their next lines. <laughs> now, here's Lindsay Wagner with a lapse of bionic memory. Right, I'll hold. I just talked with Colonel Austin, and we demand that you give us a chance to save Kurt Oscar. This happens to be a security matter, Miss Summers. Now, don't cause another problem. Problem? Cock-a-doodle. Cock doodle, cock -a -doodle. <laughs> You know, I've been practicing those those exercises that that, that you gave me, and and, and, and and it made me feel a lot more rela relaxed and kind of in touch with myself. Ah, uh, uh, they, they, it's nice. <laughs> that was no accident, and neither is this. It's all part of his plan to make some kind of a rendezvous. <laughs> <laughs> now, what Chuck Connors says here isn't in the script. Picked up a horse once. You want me to show you? Yeah, let me see you do it. <laughs> I promised myself I was going legit. Hey, Jake, you want to bait? Plant your peepers on that, pal, huh? Genuine boa cut, belly cut boa. You're fair, you being very From my granddaddy to me, from your granddaddy to you. Well, that's not quite right, is it? Not very good. What the hell is that? And as a professional security officer, I'd be remiss in my duties if I failed to warn you of the criminal element on the streets in this area, particularly smurf patchers. Smurf patchers? Especially in this Hubernade. You know, there's a new motion picture called Chattanooga Choo Choo, and one of its stars is the very lovely and vivacious Barbara Eden. Now, you know her from I Dream of Jeannie and uh, Harper Valley PTA, a lot of movies. Now, co-starring with Barbara in the new film is the actor and football superhero Joe Namath. Now, in this scene, all Barbara has to do is tuck Joe into bed. Now, let me preface this and say there are a lot of ladies in America who would like this assignment, but Barbara is a true professional. She lets nothing interfere with her work. When she is acting, it is strictly business. Almost. All right. Under the blanket. Will you tuck me in? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Cut <laughs> <Get> it! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a lady who obviously enjoys her work, Miss Barbara Eden. <laughs> Good evening, my dear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Please sit for a second. You know, women all of America would have killed to have that job. What happened? Well, that, that's simple, Dick. You see, with his right hand, he just pulled me down. He what? He pulled me down with his right, right hand. Right, right hand. <laughs> you are saying that Joe pulled you down with his right hand? Yes. Would you mind if we had a little instant replay? Oh, not at all. Joe's used to those. All right, look here. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute. You say he pulled you down. I didn't see anything like that. It was a close call. I was sleepy. <laughs> now, you brought some more memorable scenes from that uh, picture of Chattanooga Choo Choo. Before we see them, though, I want to talk to you a little bit about I Dream of Jeannie. Now, that was on for how long? Five years? Five years. Five years. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of special effects. You appeared, you disappeared, you got bigger, you got smaller, all sorts of things. They told me to ask you about... Was it a pussycat? No, it was a lion. Working with a yeah, lion? You're, you're a, a, serious? Yeah. A lion? A mm -hmm. real lion? Yeah. What was the setup? Yeah. Well, this was the first year of Jeannie, mm -hmm. and I was pregnant. And, uh, in real life? Yes, in real life oh, I was Oh, yeah, pregnant. I lost, because I never <laughs> remember Jeannie being with child. No, anyway. no, no, Barbara was with yes. child. <laughs> but I decided that I would go make friends with a lion before I worked. I had worked with a lion before. Smart thinking. And they really like to be familiar with the people. Yeah. That, they, that they're working with. So I went over and fed him and petted him and everything. And, and in the scene, I was to sit on a sofa 
and I was complaining to my master that I wanted my pet, mm -hmm. you know, and please let me have a pet. I'm so bored all alone when he's at work. And he finally gives in Larry, of course. Yeah, Larry he was Hagen. sitting right next to me like this, like right, right here. Right. And then they put a little bowl of meat, raw meat, mm -hmm. by my leg. And you I, see this on camera? Yeah. Well, yeah. no, no, you don't see the meat. Oh, right. No. And when you pop a, an animal or a person in, you, I blink, and then you freeze. Then they brought the lion in, uh -huh. and he ate the meat immediately. <laughs> and then they said, action. And I went, oh, and the lion turned around, looked at Larry, and went, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, Larry was gone. <laughs> the camera was on the floor. And the you? whole crew left. I had the lion in my lap. Was he placid? He was in my lap. Was it, was he, he was he? purring and licking my arm well, and purring. <laughs> but everybody else was gone. I mean, there wasn't a camera. There wasn't Glad a, you're a still crew here. member. <laughs> Let, let me jump to the, the Chattanooga Choo Choo thing. Uh, what basically is it, first of all? It's about a, uh, a not-so-nice son-in-law of a very wealthy man who's about to come into a fortune if he can make the last train ride on the Chattanooga Choo Choo in a given amount of time. Well, who do you play in the film? I play the girlfriend of this not-so-very-nice son-in-law who is played by the very nice George Kennedy. Now, you brought us a piece of film. Should you set up the scene for us? Uh, yes, yes. In this scene... George tells me he wants to marry me, and then he's supposed to kiss me. Well, what could go wrong with that? That's really easy. You lean over and you kiss somebody. He couldn't find me. <laughs> A wedding? That's what I said. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> now, that's more like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my mouth's here. <laughs> <laughs> How many kisses did it take? Oh, enough. Now, you worked with another <laughs> fine performer, Clue Culliger. Yes. Now, yes. uh, what is the story here? Well, in this scene, Clue wants to say something like, uh, if I get a shot at it. If I get a what? A shot a at shot it. A shot is the key word? Mm -hmm. Didn't mm -hmm. come out that way. No. <laughs> he went in the best way possible, Estelle. Oh, it's nice to see you, Sam. Yeah. We'll all miss Daddy. <laughs> Still think you're going to build a new stadium, Sam? Yeah, I reckon I got a shirt. <laughs> you got a shirt? <laughs> oh, we, have, we have a scene here with uh, Melissa Sue Anderson. Mm -hmm. What's that story? Well, the words she had trouble saying here were the Duke. The Duke. The Duke. D-U-K-E, Duke. Mm -hmm. The Duke. Mm -hmm. So you're the one who's marrying into royalty. Oh, my. You're certainly pretty enough to be a princess. <laughs> Thank you. This is my fiancé right here. Little... I'm sorry. I call him the Lord. <laughs> the Lord, yes. Hey, we were sort of kidding you earlier about that scene with Joe Namath. I hope you know we did it in the spirit of good fun and all of that. Of course I did, Dick. Yeah. Sure, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, very few things throw me while I'm working. It's just when something happens that I don't expect. You mean like this little piece of business I have here with yes, Joe Namath? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. The unexpected. Yes. <laughs> Who is it? It's me, Duke. Now, she doesn't know what Joe Namath is going to do when he opens the door. That's why she'll be surprised. Yes? Well, uh, I spoke to the boss. What did he say? He said... <laughs> you know, if you were to list all the things it takes to make a comedy series like Laverne and Shirley a long-running success, you'd have to include, what, fine writing, slick production values, cast and crew that works together like a well-oiled machine. Now, occasionally there are a few squeaks here and there, and to tell us about those squeaks, we asked one of the comedy stars of Laverne and Shirley, you remember the fellow who played Laverne's father, Phil Foster, to tell us about some of the goodies. Uh, the show we used to do would start on Monday, or Wednesday or Thursday, it depends on how the girls felt. And uh, usually it would be five days, but sometimes we did it in three. And uh, we would rewrite from the time we got the script until the time we did the show. And sometimes we change that. So if you memorize all those lines, every time you go crazy. I would have trouble forgetting the lines I memorized. And uh, that was the type of show that I would love to do forever where you have a good time. And we, that's one thing we did. We enjoyed ourselves. There are those who say that a many splendid thing 
I blew the <laughs> you, I got to tell you about the time we had a, uh, a young fellow wanted to be a director. And Gary Marshall, uh, he likes to give young people a chance to become a director. And so this fellow became a director, except he didn't know some of the famous words, the, the words that are necessary for a director. One is action. If you don't say action, the show doesn't start. So we had a fellow who sat around and he kept saying to us, go ahead. Uh, Bill would like to hear the word action. <laughs> Well, when, when, I don't know. We're rolling. We're still rolling. We're still rolling. Rolling don't mean <laughs> to me. <laughs> I, I, I like to hear the word action. I've been show business. You heard it again. Please, I'm having a relationship with this ironing board. <laughs> the characters Laverne and Shirley was and is and will be Benny Marshall and Cindy Williams. Cindy Williams was Shirley, will always be Shirley, because she was Shirley. And Penny Marshall will always be Laverne, because she is Laverne. The two of them, and they grew into these, they really grew and matured in these parts. That they, they, they were wonderful. I think they were one of the finest comedy teams, men or women, ever. You know what you are? You're a great big bully, that's what you are. see the show through. We were trying very hard. We, we never tried deliberately to break up unless we had something where it caused you to break it up. But uh, uh, we tried hard, and so when something would go wrong, and you say, ah, jeez, and you said the word, they understood it. They, uh, they didn't mind. Didn't At least I don't think they did. We never got a complaint. Here's where the giggles get the best no. of them. I realized something about myself. about myself. I stood there toe to toe fighting. <laughs> Thank you.